Okay, guys, I almost got everything done. Um, but let's go ahead and finish off with um, the previous problem. So part C, um, when you have a negative U, that means that it's going the opposite direction. So anytime you see negative, think about it. I mean, that means opposite. So if we're going 300 degrees, I don't know if you guys can see that very well, 300 degrees, that's going to put us in this direction. We're going to be going the opposite direction this way. So let's think about what that means as far as direction. So 300 degrees, um, this is going to be a 30 degree reference angle. So this is going to be a 30 degree reference angle. So um, this, the negative U, that's going to be 90 plus 30, which is 120 degrees. So I know it's going to be 120 degrees. I know that the length um, or the magnitude is going to be the same. So I know that it's going to go this direction. So this is going to be representative of negative U. So this means 400 miles um, on a course of 120 degrees. And that will give us that direction. Okay, guys, um, this is another really important component. So if you are just given um, the magnitude and the direction, and you need to know basically like your A, B, or, I mean, let's face it, let's go back to what you're used to, like the X, Y coordinates on a coordinate plane. Um, you need to know like what those are. There's formulas for that. So your A is going to be the magnitude times the cosine of your direction. And B is going to be the magnitude um, times the sine of your direction. So, like, if we were doing the coordinate point A, B, um, we're just plugging in those, those formulas. So, hopefully, it'll make sense when we go to um, an example here. Okay, so vector V has a magnitude of 14.5 and a direction angle of 220. So, we need to find the horizontal A and vertical components B. So basically that's what we're doing. So I know that V, sorry, that's a V, um, is equal to 14.5, and I know that theta is equal to 220, 220 degrees. Okay, so let's kind of, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and sketch a picture really quickly. Okay, so we're just gonna put this on a regular coordinate plane. So like, go back to like unit one. Don't think bearings here. Um, so this is 90, 180, let's call it 220 right there. Okay, so we have 220 degrees. I know that um, this is V and the magnitude is 14.5. Okay, so visually that's what's going on here. So now I'm just going to get into the algebra of it. So I know to find A is going to be the magnitude times the cosine of theta. Okay, so I have 14.5 times the cosine of 220. And, and I get about negative 11.1 for A. So let's see if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, because it's in the second quadrant. Um, so that makes sense that it's negative. Okay, so let's go to B. I'm going to have 14.5 up here um, times the sine of 220. And I get um, B is about negative 9.3. So let's see if that makes sense. So B is negative. Yep, that makes sense. Okay, so our um, coordinate points for vector AB is negative 11.1, negative 9.3. Okay, so um, we're gonna write each vector in the form of AD, like given what we have. Okay, so on this one, I know that the magnitude is eight. So think about like, just practice writing that out because that part is new. And I know that theta equals 135. Okay, so again, I'm doing the same thing. Um, so go ahead and try it and see 
if you can do, actually, I think I'm probably going to turn you loose on all three of these here. So go ahead and see what you can do with those, and then we'll come back. Okay, so I wanted to get your um, minds kind of wrapped around this before I went into some stuff. Um, first of all, you should just be normal, or sorry, I don't even know my letters now. Um, w should be normal. That's just a regular calculator problem. But I want you to um, look at U and V. Those both showed up on the unit circle. So probably when you type this in your calculator, the V one, um, it like you could get there no problem. But I just wanted you to know that it is that way because on the unit, it's on the unit circle. Um, also, um, as always, when you have a um, degree that shows up on the unit circle, don't be so quick to jump on your calculator. Go ahead and give the exact um, answer if you can, if that's possible. So hopefully you guys got all those correct. Okay, so for this example, um, it like the word problem looks really scary, but it's really not at all once you kind of decode it. Okay, so we have two forces of 32 newtons and 48 newtons that act on a point in the plane. Okay, so let's go back up to, um, let's see. So it's going to look like this. So we've got these two forces that are working together. And um, it's going to ask us to find the magnitude of the resultant vector. So we're looking for this part right here. So I'm going to jump down there. But um, this is like we've talked about this before, just like briefly. So I'm going to go ahead and um, draw out the diagram. The difference with this problem is I want to pick up, I want it, we're going to make this into a parallelogram. Okay. So um, I want to pick up this piece and move it over here so it's a diagonal. So let me show you. Um, so this is still A right there. And then I want this to be B. And the reason why is I don't want it like this. I want that vector to go through the middle as a diagonal. So, um, so this is where that A plus B is. And what's going to happen is we're going to use those law of co cosines to, um, to help us out here. So let's go down here. And I'm just going to um, just apply it to this problem. So I'm going to redraw everything. Okay, so I set that up like this. And the reason I'm doing this is you want your, um, your resultant vector to come out of the initial size. So I want this vector right there. So be very, very careful on that. The setup is really important. Um, so I also know that this whole angle here is 76. So um, what's going to help me is I know that, let's see, this is going to be 48 and this is going to be 32. So this angle right here is going to be like 180 minus 76. So that's going to be um, 104 degrees. So that's actually... Um, that's what I'm going to use since the angle isn't like cut in half or anything. So um, I'm going to go ahead and apply the law of cosines because that's what we're going to use here. Um, just remember, think back to um, that last lesson where we found the diagonals of parallelograms, and that's what's going to help us out here. You should get, um, once you apply, apply the law of cosines, you should get about um, 63.81 newtons. Okay, so we are going to end up um, with this one in this video. So um, what we're doing is we are just adding the two vectors, U and V, and literally it's just like a matrix. So you're just going to um, combine like terms. So if I have, let me write this out. Then it's just going to be negative 8, 5. For my vector, six plus negative fourteen, negative three plus eight. That's it. Okay, and so this is our scalar. So I'm going to take half of this vector. So let me write that out. Sorry, it's negative one. So I'm just going to take half of um, negative fourteen, or negative one half of negative fourteen, and negative one half of eight. Okay, so go ahead and try this one, and then we'll be done with this video.
Okay, so you should have gotten um, your vector coordinates as um, positive 58 and then negative 31. And that is it.